To understand microorganisms, we're going to examine a Winogradsky column. A Winogradsky column is made from mud, calcium sulfate, shredded newsprint, and calcium carbonate. All these things are mixed together in this column. Here's an example that I've had in my classroom for four years now. Here's another example. But before we talk about the Winogradsky column, let's revisit the requirements for life. Sketch this in your spiral, and let's see what we can find in our Winogradsky column. So at the top here, some observations we may find. What we tend to see at the top is more of a greenish looking color. As we move down the column, we'll see more reddish color. Towards the middle, we may find some purple. And at the bottom, we'll tend to see black. What's going to cause these different colors to form in this Winogradsky column? The answer is bacteria these microorganisms are going to develop in our column. Now, do we create life in this column by mixing together all these different components and mud? No, of course not. That'd be spectacular if we did. We'd get a Nobel Prize if we did that. All we did was allow bacteria to grow in different environmental conditions. These bacteria came from the mud itself different kinds of these bacteria are existing in the mud and now they're thriving in different areas of our column. But what's the difference from one area of the column to another area of this column? To the top, obviously, we have an awful lot of light. Okay, so at the top we've got uh, green things and light. Uh, green things and light. Okay, sports fans, do the math here, figure out what's going on. Write the chemical equation. Go. Hopefully you wrote the following. This, of course, is going to mean that we have photosynthesis going on. And our chemical equation, once again, is the following. So we're going to take light energy, combine that with water, CO2, and we're making food energy at this point. And we have oxygen as a byproduct. That's what's going on at the top of our column. So we have lots of oxygen at the top of the column building up. And at, over time, then, this oxygen will diffuse down. So lots of oxygen at the top. We have less and less oxygen moving down the column. So it'll look something like this. Here's our amount of oxygen. Huge amounts at the top. And then less and less as we move down the column. And why is it organisms are doing this, turning light energy into food energy? Once again, it goes back to making ATP. All organisms need to have ATP in their cells in order to function. So you guessed it, write the chemical equation for making ATP. That's right, folks. You've got it correct. Hopefully you wrote the chemical equation for cellular respiration. And here it is. Once again, just the reversed almost of photosynthesis. So here we're starting now with food energy. We're going to combine that with oxygen. We'll then create as byproducts water, CO2, and we have now the ultimate goal, ATP energy. Now let's go here to the bottom. At the bottom we have more of black type substance. What kind of environmental conditions do we have down here? Well, at the top we have a lot of light. At the bottom we have relatively no light. So we'll put no light here. So what's happening here? In this part of the column we have the following reaction taking place. Here we have bacteria that are taking simple carbohydrates combining that with a calcium sulfate and in so doing they're creating hydrogen sulfide and ATP. 
Notice here that there's a buildup of hydrogen sulfide. This will be a lot of hydrogen sulfide at the bottom, and that too will diffuse up in the column. The ultimate goal here was ATP. This is the same kind of respiration that you do, but they're using different chemicals to create the same ATP. So while you had simple carbohydrates that combine with oxygen to make ATP, they're going to take these simple carbohydrates, combine that with calcium sulfate to make their ATP. So there's lots of different ways of doing cellular respiration. This is just but one. Here are some possible organisms in this column. I'll give these guys some names. At the top here we have something known as cyanobacteria. <clears throat> the purple one is a fancy name. We call it purple sulfur bacteria. Pretty creative names by scientists. And at the bottom, we have sulfate reducing bacteria. In this purple sulfur bacteria, one of the chemical reactions taking place, because I have sulfide available to me, these organisms are going to go through a different process. In this process, they're actually going to take this hydrogen sulfide, combine it with CO2 to make food and as a leftover sulfur. So here's a food being generated, not from light energy, but from simple chemicals. Once again, revisiting this topic, this is known as chemosynthesis. We're taking inorganic chemicals and making food out of it. What's the purpose of making this food? Once again, we're going to take this, go through cellular respiration, and make ATP. So what we see here is different kinds of life thriving based on different environmental conditions. Here's something to consider. Think about this.